Hey everybody, if you've read the title, you probably figured out that I crashed my truck this week. Today, I wanna tell you about what failed on my truck that caused this to happen, and hopefully how you can prevent this from happening to you. Stay tuned. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. If you're watching this video and you're old enough to drive, odds are you probably have a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. Now, before I tell you how I crashed my truck, let me tell you why. And the reason I crashed my truck had to do with my anti-lock brakes. I'm gonna tell you quick how anti-lock brakes work and what they do. If you already know, if you really don't care, just skip forward until you see me take my hat off. That's how you'll know that I'm done with my anti-lock brakes speech. All right, if you've ever been driving your vehicle in slippery conditions and you stepped on your brake pedal really hard and you felt like the brake pedal was pushing back against you and rumbling and shaking and vibrating, that was your anti-lock brake system trying to keep your wheels from locking up and sliding. Because when your wheels stop turning when you're driving, you lose all control over what direction you're going. And believe it or not, you can't stop as quickly if your wheels are stopped as you can if they are still turning just a little bit and still applying the brakes. So a long time ago, somebody came up with the idea of anti-lock brakes. Before that, you had to actually know how to drive your vehicle and pump the brakes and release and reapply the brakes if your wheels started to slide. If you didn't do that, your vehicle would slide sideways, you'd go in the ditch, you'd lose all sorts of control of what you were doing. But now we have anti-lock brakes. The vehicle does the work and all of the thinking for us. All right, so when everything is normal and you're just driving along or you're slowing down on dry pavement, all of your wheels should be spinning at exactly the same speed. So your vehicle has a wheel speed sensor on each one of the wheels that keeps track of how fast each wheel is turning. Some vehicles like this pickup only have one sensor in the back in the rear differential, but anyway, the idea is the same. So if one of your wheels locks up and starts to slide, that speed sensor is going to be showing a slower speed reading for that wheel than the rest of the wheels. And if that happens, your anti-lock brake system starts pounding the brake pedal back against your foot in an effort to try to let the wheels keep turning. Now it does it very fast, so your wheels will maybe skid just a little bit and then turn and then skid just a little bit and then turn a lot faster than you could do it by pumping the brake pedal yourself. And in general, this is fantastic. It keeps you going straight down the road. It actually helps you stop a lot faster than if you were just sliding. Generally, it's excellent technology, but what happens when one of those wheel speed sensors fails? You know what? We better get the rest of the people back here. All right, I took my hat off, so let's wait for the slackers and the know-it-alls to get back. Wow. Got some great hair. I should have came up with a different signal. Anyway, so what happens when one of your wheel speed sensors fails and shows a zero reading when it's actually still turning? Because that's what happened to this truck. The ABS system thought that one of my brakes was locked up, and so it continually started pounding the brake pedal back against me. It was releasing the brakes, releasing the brakes, releasing the brakes, trying to keep that wheel from locking up and skidding. But the problem was that wheel wasn't locking up and skidding and the wheel speed sensor was continuing to send a zero speed to the ABS computer. So no matter how hard I stood on the brake, I even tried letting off a couple of times, slamming down on the brake again. There was nothing I could do my truck wasn't slowing down at all. Now, I don't know if it was because I had it in four wheel drive, if that made it worse, but the wheel speed sensor is what caused me to crash my truck. Fortunately, I am fine. My truck is still drivable. The other vehicle is still drivable. In fact, let me get out right now and show you the damage to my truck. And then I'll explain what you can do to make sure this never ever happens to you. Okay, so it's a good thing this truck has a bumper because this bumper did some bumping. Look at that. It's kind of crunched in right here and it's crunched in right here. And I got pretty lucky because this 
plastic cowling right here that's supposed to, I assume, direct wind through your bumper into your radiator is just about touching the air conditioner condenser right here. So, I mean, that's really close. So really, I got pretty lucky because I smashed this bumper in as far as I possibly could without really hurting anything behind it. So kind of sad that my nice new Dodge is all boogered up. I wish I could show you how the other vehicle looks, the one that I rear-ended, because it doesn't, it didn't fare quite as well. Oh wait, I can, because it's inside my garage. Yes, that's right. I rear-ended my wife's car inside my own garage at my house. How ridiculous is that? So my truck actually lives in that barn right over there in the wintertime. And I was driving over to the garage to get a wrench out of the garage. And I started trying to stop right about back here where I normally would. I wasn't going super fast, probably 10 miles an hour, but I certainly didn't slow down all the way up to the garage and into the garage and bang right into the back of my wife's car. Let's go take a look. So upon initial inspection, it doesn't look that bad. However, the bumper is broken right here, and it's also broken right here. And these darn pieces of plastic are crazy expensive, especially this one, because it's actually painted the same color as the rest of the car. It's not black. So I'm gonna have to probably buy a brand new bumper piece and then have it painted the same color as my car. I am a farmer, so I'm probably going to try to clean this up and see if I can use some sort of plastic weld epoxy um, and get it to match right back up again and look decent. I'm almost sure I could fix this piece, um, and it's probably not that expensive as it is. Anyway, that's not cool. And then I noticed that there's a big, big dent right here. Uh, it's almost hard to see, but if you look straight down, look at how far this rib sticks out on this side. And then look at how far in it is on this side. You look at it from a little bit of an angle and you can see she's dented pretty good. So that's gonna take some work to get that pulled out. That's not cool. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, Carl, that's not that big of a deal. You know, a low speed crash in your own driveway, in your own garage, both of your vehicles are still drivable. That's true. It's not that big of a deal, but you know what? It could have been a really big deal. On my way to work every day, there's a T intersection that I pull up to onto a highway. There's another four-way intersection that I pull up to on a state highway where the cross traffic does not stop. Guys, I could have gotten myself killed. I could have been an ugly hood ornament on a Peterbilt just like that, or I could have ran over some kid in front of my kid's school. It could have been really bad because like I say, I literally could not stop at all. I couldn't even slow down. I think the truck was actually speeding up and I was standing on the brake as hard as I could, trying everything I could do to get it to stop. It was really scary. So thinking about what could have happened is way scarier than thinking about what did happen. Like I promised, I was gonna tell you what you can do to make sure that this never happens to you like it happened to me. It's really simple. First and foremost, if you ever have this issue happen to you, it'll usually start very slowly when you're coming to a stop sign like right before you stop it'll uh, rumble the brake pedal just a little bit and activate the abs if that ever happens to you on dry pavement that is a wheel speed sensor getting ready to fail starting to fail and you need to get that addressed immediately don't let that go on and on and keep driving it like it is that's what i did i had that problem starting and i was like i need to get this diagnosed but it's not that big of a deal it usually only happened you know, once in a great while, and it only happened right when I was coming to a stop. It wasn't very scary at all. I thought, ah, I'll take care of this, you know, as soon as I can figure out which wheel speed sensor it is, I'll get it taken care of. That is very hypocritical if you watched last week's video where I was talking about how important it is to keep all your things maintained and uh, fix all the little problems before they became big problems. Guys, that's, <laughs> that's my own advice that I need to take. Secondly, let me show you what you can do to your vehicle really quickly so that you can avoid a crash if you do start to have this problem. 
and you need to still drive your vehicle to the mechanic or you need to drive it for another day or two before you can get it fixed, I'm not saying you should let this go on and on, but here's what you can do to make sure you don't get yourself in a wreck. All right, every vehicle has a fuse panel. The one on my Dodge is right here inside the driver's door. And look at this, you got all these fuses. And most of them on the fuse panel door have a little key to tell you what each fuse goes to and a little tool to help you pull the fuses out. If you find the letters ABS, that stands for anti-lock brake system. So number three, the number three fuse, you will see these numbers printed right here on your fuse block next to the fuses. You can see that I removed the number three fuse. So with that fuse removed, the ABS or anti-lock brake system no longer works on my truck. That means if I slam on the brakes, all four wheels are gonna stop spinning. I'm gonna start sliding. And if I'm not careful or not knowledgeable about how to pump the brakes and release them and keep myself in control, I could go sliding off into the ditch. This is not a permanent solution to the problem. The other issue that I have now is I have no working speedometer. The speedometer is on zero all the time while I'm driving. That's also not great. Now I know that at 1500 RPMs in overdrive, I'm going 56 miles an hour. Um, so I can drive the speed limit without a speedometer. But the point is, if you need to get your vehicle to the mechanic or you need to use it another day or two before you can get it to the mechanic, if you start to notice this ABS problem happening when you're coming to a slow stop, pull that ABS fuse out right away because I honestly can't believe how fast that thing failed completely and I couldn't believe what it was like when it did fail. I, Like I say, I went 50 feet and didn't slow down at all doing everything I could do to try to stop right into the garage, crashed right into my wife's car. So I'm very fortunate that things turned out the way they did, that I didn't hit someone, get myself killed. This wasn't the video I wanted to make today. I had other plans, but I thought that this was really important. It really made an impression on me and I wanted to make an impression on you that if something is happening with your ABS brake system, don't ignore it. Do not drive it one more time without pulling that fuse out and get it to a mechanic that you trust right away and get that situation resolved. So there you have it. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me this week. I'll see you next time.